गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन एंड टूडे वी हैव मिस्टर गॉर्जन ओवर स्मिथ विद अस हेयर फॉर आवर नेक्स्ट एपिसोड ऑफ कॉफी कॉन टॉक इंटरव्यू ही इज द सीई ऑफ ओ डी सिस्टम एंड हैज बीन लेक्चर इन वेरियस यूनिवर्सिटीज अक्रॉस यूरोप फॉर ऑलमोस्ट ट्वेंटी ईयर्स नाउ सो लेट्स बिगिन विद इंटरव्यू so mr gorjan first question i would like to ask you is would you like to tell us more about your educational and professional background yes i'm i'm absolutely happy so thanks um in the beginning to to have me um i'm i'm really happy to to share everything that that you are interested in um starting with my educational background i went through this kind of very regular german school system uh, which that days went on for 30 years so you had to kind of like go in different school forms it starts with primary school then it goes to um the grade 5 to 10 or 13 and then you are eligible to go to university and that's what i did but i went to navy before so i wanted to become a navy officer and um did this for four years and had a very kind of like cool learning there i had the chance to go on one of these big sail ships learned a lot about teamwork and the and the power of nature so that was my biggest learning and um then i went to university and studied in germany the netherlands and finished my mba at the uk university of bradford and immediately started to to um look into different directions so i started off as a as a consultant um and found that i'm more tending to be a person that actually kind of like rolls up sleeves and gets things work um so i started to work with the with the new economy that was actually kind of really big when we stopped um uh, university so when we finished university and i worked with um different companies in the it sector then i actually kind of transferred um from there to a lobby organization who wanted to set up a digitalization process for their skilled crafts membership and then came across a person that was asking me to support him with the business plan and I did so I just kind of got absorbed into something that I then did for 10 years and we set up um an architectural project but before I had m- a lot of different um yeah possibilities to set up companies to see how it can grow how how you actually kind of have learning so one of my good friends said ones that it's um becoming an entrepreneur is a seven years learning and um he's absolutely right that it's a it's a long learning but i would say it's a continuous learning because there's always something that you can you can add on so if you ask me about my educational and professional background i would say it's a continuous learning system and um i actually then started the company which was running for 10 years till the financial crisis so we had to reorientate because uh, it was a big problem because it was in the event industry it was architecture and um uh, we had to restart from scratch so and that was basically one of the biggest learnings that facing some really kind of like massive problems is changing people so it's it's changing their mindset it's changing their ability to look into the future and so uh, that's actually part and or just to wrap it up um in a in a more brief way so there's there's a lot of different things i said um i did so it was it was not a very straight way that i took uh, i was kind of like considering a lot of different path and finally found something that really made me click and that's basically the today's me it's really great to hear sir really great to hear all this about you so now ayati off for the next question yeah uh, so the next question is um, considering the dynamic job landscape that is prevalent worldwide what do you think are the most important skills uh, that an individual in general and specifically an economic student must try to develop mhm good question um so actually one of the things that i try to teach during my lectures 
for for the years that I was I was involved was to actually make them listen not to to me sure they had to listen to me as well but listening is one of the big skills because if you look at today's society it's a lot of me's but less us if it comes to the world view um so if you can see with with um vaccination there's a there's a big rumor in in in, in europe about okay um can governments force people to get vaccinated for the benefit of society or is the individual right a higher value to protect and and there i think it's a it's it's a very kind of obvious topic that this me is the cause of all this so people are not willing to listen so you have um you have opinions and then if you go into a discussion you have the opinions um clashing and that's not really kind of bringing you to the best possible answer and um so I would I would say listening is one of the really major skills. Even if if all these organizations going into evaluating what are life skills that people need are talking about um, positive attitude, um, they are talking about communication, um, they're talking about teamwork, uh, self assessment, um, willingness to learn, and and all this. And it's all right. So it's it's this whole person view that you need to kind of like form and in the end it's the resilience and that's something that i would say it's it's the attitude that brought us to this me that i was uh, that i was talking about but that is actually kind of like misconcepted so it's for sure you need a standpoint you need a standpoint what are your your visions what are your your opinions and everything but the ability to listen means to me as well the ability to adopt to other views, to other opinions, to other arguments without saying, okay, those are not mine, stop talking to me. Because that's part of the process that you have everywhere. It's not only um, in, 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 in companies that you need to kind of thrive for the best because you want to serve clients, you want to have the best product, you want to have a meaningful product. So that's part of, of my idea, what the, what the next workforce will be, um, yeah, what we need to kind of look out for. And if you see, there's a, there was a recent um, McKinsey research that showed that uh, executives spend almost 40% of their time uh, making decisions and believe most of that time is purely, poorly used. So, um, what does it say? 40% uh, say that the time of the decision-making is poorly used and they are looking to improve the decision-making skills of people. And that includes them to make decisions in a high uncertainty. And high uncertainty means you need to listen even more because you listen to something that is not even existing. And this is for economic students, it's a, it's a very strong task. Thank you for the answer. And the next question would be posed by Himach. Mm -hmm. Yes, sure. Thank you, Ati. So I would like to ask you what are your views on the education system and the job market dynamics in India? And how would you say it is different from that of Europe? Mm -hmm. <laughs> hmm. So first of all, let me say I'm not an economist. Um, and and so what we what we do is we continuously look into something um, that is strongly linked to to what we do right now. It's it's actually um, it's how is how is Gen Z millennials performing in different areas. So it's it's a lot of data that we continuously kind of like mingle and try to understand and and listen into. Actually, it's there again. It's the listening topic. Um, so what. I know is that the unemployment rate um, in in India is roughly about thirty percent, if I'm, I'm not wrong. Um, it's it's basically the 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 highest um, amount is between twenty and twenty four, 
and you can see this in Europe as well. There's um, there's countries where um, unemployment rate is is thirty percent as well. It's Spain, for example. Italy is close to thirty percent. Uh, even Sweden has something like twenty five percent, I guess. So um, it, I think that is that is something that maybe currently is due to um, a couple of factors. So one definitely is um, is the Corona pandemic situation, um, and the other is that there's a lot of jobs that people don't want to do anymore. So um, this actually is, is causing problems in different areas. So, for example, if you want to, if you if you need a skilled crafts people person in 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 Germany right now, you have to wait. It's kind of like if your plumbing is wrong and it's leaking, you have a problem because you don't get people. Um, on the other side, you have a lot of people studying in a direction that, at that time, was perceived the best direction to go for. And um, what I actually I, I talked um, before with Himanju as well um, is that a lot of people are going into engineering, but it's a limited number of people that can that are actually requested by the market, and the market is not requesting those who don't have the passion for that job. They ask the people that have the passion and the abilities to perform to the best. And, and that is actually causing a lot of problems for, for young people and um, actually for all of us in the future because we need to have people in all different jobs. We need to have people in, uh, performing in those jobs. And, but I think it's not really so different when it comes to the approach we try to put as much as possible um, knowledge into into young kids and and people um, and i was i was actually i was i was really impressed i was visiting one of the schools um, in dubai and they had the sign on the um, in the entrance hall and it said okay we are we are um, we are supporting the change makers of tomorrow. And I was, I was actually, I was saying, yeah, sure. Everybody wants to do this, but I went to talk to the faculty and I went into their system and they even had a, uh, had a design thinking uh, laboratory for their primary school kids. And I was like, wow, can I go to school here again? So it's, it's the ability to create curiosity to show the existence of different paths that I see is crucial to the education system. And I see that there's a lot of movement as well in India. So with the changes that kids don't have to decide when they are 14, so they have more time to create their like, um, like future themselves. And, and that's something I think it, can go the right way, but it needs to be supported with a lot of different topics like life skills. And I don't, I'm not talking, so there's, I don't know if you, if you uh, heard about it in Germany, there is a discussion on, um, do kids need to know or learn in school about taxes? And to be honest, no, they don't. They need the basic skills, they need curiosity. So that's something that, that school has to provide. So they need to, tell them, okay, you can get information, you, you learn how to source this information and how to build up knowledge themselves. And if, for those who can't do it themselves, they need guidance. And that's something that I see that the education system should, should support. And I don't see that there's a big difference between Europe and India. I think they, they have a lot of, of similar roots when it comes to educational thinking. And what I like and what I learned, but I cannot really kind of re re recall it. Um, I, in my, one of my first discussions with um, someone from the education system in India, he told me about the seven level of, of teachers. So from the teacher who teaches you um, the, the topic, and then you have all the, all the way up to the teacher that not only teach you the knowledge, but as well gives you the vision, the ability to see the bigger picture. 
and that's something I really like. And I really, I, I, I just kind of like promoting this in Germany. Whenever I'm in, in a discussion, I'm always telling, okay, look, in India, they have a separation between teachers. They separate if you are able to kind of like clearly say, okay, that's the information, that's very basic knowledge that you need to have. Or if you even can give them the vision and the curiosity for the future. And that's something that I really uh, think that we can learn from each other. Thank you, sir. Thank you. A really informative answer. So, IFT, on to the next question. Yeah. Uh, so, we are curious to know that, um, so you've been a lecturer for almost 20 years, and then you transitioned into the new space of the corporate world and building up your own company. So what skill sets did you acquire as a professor that you that have helped you in this transition into the corporate world? Um, yeah, so I do have to kind of like put one point. I was in the corporate world always. I did my lecturing um, at the same time. So I, I did two things. And um, actually, I did it because I thought that the the knowledge that i accumulated plus the experience from from the corporate world would be a beneficial add-on to the general knowledge transfer for students and if you ask me for the knowledge that made me lecture um I think you have to, yeah, actually yesterday night we talked to an old teacher of, of, uh, of, uh, of ours and he said, you need to be a performer, a little bit, you need to be a performer because you are on stage, you are on stage promoting and distributing your knowledge. And um, maybe that's something that goes the direction that you were asking as well a little bit. But for, for myself, I would say providing knowledge to generations that follow is always an honor. So, because um, looking into it, I hope I just kind of could, um, could give people what they were looking for. So, because I'm, I'm believing that curiosity is actually kind of asking for, for, for food. And, and this food is knowledge. And the, and the knowledge is actually a combination of theoretical and practical uh, information gathered. So that's that's what I would see. I, I cannot say, sure, I can say the, the, the official version. I can say you need pedagogical uh, competence. You need uh, in-depth knowledge when it comes to the topic. You need to have the variety of, of viewpoints on this topic that you're lecturing. Um, but I was always extremely happy when, I don't know, one of my students, she came and said, uh, she was in, in um, sixth semester, and she came and she said, Gordian, you know what? I really understood what marketing is all about now. And I was like, okay, <laughs> but you're in the sixth semester, you should have known it before. And she was like, yeah, whenever I asked the professor, he continuously repeated the same explanation over and over. And I just kind of couldn't understand him. And, and I was like, okay, but that's part of the study. If you don't understand the viewpoint or the explanation of one person, go to the library and, and look up for other definitions and see if you can understand it better. So it's, it's your responsibility as well to go to libraries and, and source this information. And um, so just kind of like, that's, that's what, what for me is the guidance that the lecturer can provide. And um, doing this with social marketing was pretty hard because you need to kind of like shift the perception of people on what communication can do and what marketing can do. And um, so I, I think if you would ask people, I think you should ask students what a good professor is actually all about. Absolutely, thank you. So the next question by Himanshu. Yes. 
So I would like to ask you, like you took the decision of starting your own company, OD Systems, in 2018. So what led you to this decision, and could you brief us more about what the company is all about? Yes, sure.、Um, and you have to stop me because I'm always getting very passionate when I talk about OD Systems.、Um, uh, Actually, it's it's a it's a it's a long decision itself because、um, the idea is coming from as early as 2003 when I first thought about okay what is this going on so I I as I said、um, or you mentioned as well 20 years of lecturing、um, you had a lot of students that you observed and that you guided and that you supported and with these years I found that decisions are So, so much a pain for all the students from all over the world、um, that I was kind of like considering, okay, what can I do to support? And I had the chance to to talk with a good friend of mine, and she was doing decision making in product management. So it was a combination of all this kind of like sources of of input that brought me to a to an idea that I. Sketched and、um, but then put into the drawer because I thought, okay, that's something that's I don't know. It, I was not so sure about it, and、um, I <laughs> I kept on observing that decision making is not only a problem for for students, but a lot of kind of like entrepreneurs,、um, board members, and and all this as well, and finally. I found out that when our son came back from his,、um, you can you can translate it as A levels, and we asked him, okay, what are you going to study? He was he was completely kind of like, I don't know, and、um, so I thought, okay, maybe it's it's a good point to kind of take on again, and look into it in more detail. And、uh, with all my contacts with universities,、um, we started to do some more in detail research, and found that. It's a very, it's a very common topic throughout the world with Gen Z and millennials. So it's it's the variety of choices, is、um, the, the the pressure from peers, from from parents, family, society, and all this is actually kind of like taking place the same time you get all this information. So what they call the digital noise. So it's a it's a very distracting, very Mentally challenging process of taking all these decisions, specifically when you are young, because everybody is asking you to take a decision on so many different topics, from education to friendship to to all sorts of different things, but nobody is training people. So we looked into trainings for decision making, and we found that there is tons of models. So I actually found something like 250 models when I when I looked for it in the beginning, but all of them have not been up to date. It was like、um, a lot of them are within economics. It's the BCG matrix. It's、um, the Carnegie Mellon、uh, model, and so you have lots of different models that you can use. Even the pro and con lists that everybody knows, but. Are they really something that people today or in the world of today can use? And that was、um, the starting point when we created OD. OD stands for Objectified Decision Enabler or Objectified Decision Engine, and the idea is to really support people in training themselves or getting guided training from pa、uh, parents, educators,、um, to become better decision makers. The idea is to give a process. That is not creating dependencies. That is free of influence, and with guarantee of not using any data. And we did all this with a lot of people that supported us,、um, former students of mine, a lot of friends, kids, nephews, nieces, and and and、uh, so everybody. Who could not escape was helping us,、um, and we created the process to support, and that was the idea. So, where do you support best? 
in a process that is time-wise not limited. A decision can range everything from a day to three, six months, a year. And where can you support them? And that was the idea on the, on the system that we said, okay, because what you do is whenever noise is, is distracting you, you put decisions that you have in your head in the back. So because other things are more important that, that, at that moment. So we wanted to bring this decision, this pending decision, because it's, um, there was most of the people, I think it was um, almost 48% have up to five decisions pending. Um, another um, group of people had three decisions pending. There was actually only 7% who had no decisions pending. Um, on the other side, they kind of like had this fear to take a decision. It was 62% of the people we asked of 500 millennials from India to the US who responded that they, that they actually kind of like felt um, unhappy, regretful and, um, and distracted when, it, when they had taken the decision. The minute they had taken the decision, they were not really feeling good. And that's something that we took into, into consideration and thought, okay, how can we support those people? And we found that the process to give them guidance to really consider what the criteria are, what the, what the, um, what the priorities are that they're looking for, is the most supportive tool that we can create. And that's what we did. We created a tool that you can use on an app or in your computer. So it's with you all the time. You're talking with friends. What, what device do you have with you? Most probably your smartphone. So you get a new information, you can put it in. And um, as we know, and we found out that in Asia, Africa, Southern America, decision-making is a, is a very social uh, uh, event. Um, a lot of people are involved in decision making. We thought, okay, just open it up to get this feedback from others, but keep the person itself, the decision owner. So the person who's actually facing the responsibility to execute the decision and is facing the results of the decision needs to stay the owner of the decision. And that's the way how we actually kind of created the tool and that's how it actually kind of found its way to be what it's today. And um, what we see is that it really supports people with the decision process. It's not an easy task because it's documented. That's the point. So before, when you take a decision and in the end, the decision is not really nice, you can always kind of like trick yourself. And that's what people do. They trick themselves and say, yeah, because of this and this, I could not take another decision. So. And now it's actually, it's there. You can read it. Okay, what did you do? Yes, I did it because this was my criteria and I gave it this and this priority. And, and that's something that you can take as well as a learning for the future. Because if there is criteria that really supported your decision so well, why not using it for other decisions as well? And that's basically what Odi is all about. Supporting people to become better decision makers without taking influence, using their data, or making them dependent. Loved it. Really great to hear about it. So really. uh, Thi, on to the next. Yeah. So as an entrepreneur, um, what are the most uh, valuable assets or skills that you have acquired? <laughs> okay. So now you get like seven years plus learnings um no <laughs> no i i would i would say really um one thing is really listening so because as an entrepreneur you listen all around you listen to the market you listen to the consumers the users listen to the stakeholders um you have to listen to investors if you talk with investors um, so, because everybody has their idea of what your product should be, what your 
um, business model should be, how you should kind of like hire people, what kind of people you should hire. And so everybody has his own ideas and you have to translate all these ideas and make them work for, for your baby. And so for me, um, having started up several companies, um, I can say it, it's like a baby. You have to raise it. But the, I think the biggest learning is as well that you have to let go. So um, it's, everybody has, it's, has competences. And we are always talking about the things we know, but we completely forget about to talk about things we don't know. So it's, it's actually, you have to be very aware and that's something that is not only crucial for entrepreneurs, but for everybody, you should know what you don't know. Because it's, it's not a, um, I'm missing the word now. It's, it's not a problem to not know everything because we are humans. Our capacities are not really used for a hundred to a hundred percent, but to use this extra, let's say, 90 to 80 percent is really hard and it actually kind of like influences your your well-being as well i would say so knowing what you don't know means getting people on board to cover this knowledge and to be open to discuss give your opinions as well but don't forget to give decision power to those who know better than you and, and that's something that I would say, summarizing all this kind of like seven years learning, I would say, yes, knowing what you don't know is crucial. And then there's lots of like sub learnings, like um, even board members are employees to a company. If they don't perform well, they have to go. So it's again, it's this let go thing. Or if you, if you see um, so why Combinator is, a, is talking a lot about pivoting. Um, as long as you do pivot your idea for the right reasons, it's perfect. But pivoting an idea because the investor doesn't like it um, or thinks he knows better how to market this is very tricky because you have this new idea and not anybody else has it. So how can a person who did not came up with this idea can really say this is wrong or this is right? So there's, there's, there's again, we are back to the standpoint. You have to have your standpoint. And it doesn't matter, that, it doesn't mean that you don't listen to the other, uh, uh, other positions, but you, be, you have to be very clear in what your idea is. And then you can pivot it to a level that is necessary, but don't pivot it so it becomes more mainstream. So because other other um, entrepreneurs did it that way and they've been uh, they've performed well. So yes, maybe it worked for them, but you're not starting a company to copy someone. So at least I it was not my interest. There's a lot of people copying ideas and, and doing the same thing. And it's fine. It's, it's absolutely fine. I don't want to, to say that's not correct to, but um, if you come up with a disruptive or a new idea or a twisted idea of what is already existing, then try to really make this happen and listen and see how you can actually kind of implement it. And again, knowing what you don't know, get the right people on board. Because if you look at all these legends that are formed about this kind of extremely successful people, um, they've really performed well in getting the right people into their teams. Thank you so much. And the last question for the interview by Himachi. Okay, so coming on to the last question now. So mm -hmm. is there any other profession that you want to try at your hand, if at all there's any? Um, I, so you mean if there is something I would love to do and I haven't done? 
<laughs> actually, I'm uh, actually I'm happy where and who I am. Um, I I would love to extend. So I I stopped lecturing um, when I started OD because I needed to focus. Um, and I would love to restart lecturing again because I really like the um, the spirit that comes along with lecturing. So it's, I think it's something that not, it's, it's not really a topic that is discussed very often, but um, to me it's lecturing is as well an exchange. So a lot of people don't think about this because um, you, you put knowledge onto the platform and then students really take it in different ways. And to observe this and see how students do work with the knowledge that you provide is something that is really kind of like um, giving back so much more than you put into it. It's, it's kind of this kind of exchange that really is, is extremely interested, interesting to me. And, um, but the rest, I'm actually, as I said, I'm happy in what I do. And, and that's something I would love to do. Um, yeah, I would like to go on with this. Thank you so much. And uh, with this, we've come to the end of the interview and it was great talking to you. So I hope it's the same from your side as well. And uh, definitely. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm actually something I would like to say because um, I've never made it to India, but I'm really desperately waiting for coming to India and, and explore the country and the culture because it's just like amazing. Sure, you must. It's actually, I mean, the diversity here, it'll actually yeah. intrigue you. And the more you try to, you know, look at it from an objective viewpoint you'll be like more you'll delve deeper into it so like like every 10 miles a different culture a different language different sort of people their mentalities change so yeah. the diversity here is like unparalleled you will not i don't think you would find it anywhere else in the world so, so that makes me even more curious so yeah <laughs> <laughs> be prepared i'm coming <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> you have been saying that, so let's see. Cool. Okay. Perfect. Thanks a lot. For